Bum 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 hello. So for those of you who have not discovered this secret, I'm going to reveal it. And it goes like this. Coffee tastes delicious. Normally, in its normal state, coffee is delicious. But there is one way to make it more delicious. No, it has nothing to do with the ingredients or the way you've brewed it. It has nothing to do with the vessel in which you put it in. It has everything to do with the simultaneous sip. Because when you simultaneously sip with a thousand like-minded people, the coffee tastes better. I don't know why. It's just science. Just go with it. Because you're going to experience the simultaneous sip right now. Ah, that's good stuff. So I overslept and uh, didn't have time to check out most of the news. So I called up CNN's page. Let's find out all the important news. Now, the important news, if you don't know, if you look at a website for a news organization, the important news is going to be toward the top and usually to the top left because that's, that's where the eye goes. That's always the important news. So let's find out what the top uh, six stories are on CNN. All right. So this is all the news in the world, but here are the top six stories on CNN. Trump calls Amorosa a dog in latest attack. Three theories why Amorosa book is not number one. Late night comics take on Amorosa. Burnett calls out Trump's hypocrisy on Amorosa. White House paranoia deepens after Amorosa's recording. Trump has no black senior House staff, White House staff, which is also about Amorosa. How far do you have to go before you find an article on CNN that's not about Amorosa? And what is it that is the reason we're all talking about Amorosa? Well, it's not because she got fired, exactly. It's because she's got a specific claim, a claim that there is somewhere a tape, a secret tape, in which the president allegedly but nobody can find this tape, and the people that she claims had it have no idea what she's talking about. But allegedly, there's a tape in which he uses the N-word. Now, it seems to me, given how much someone would pay for such a tape, and how badly someone wants it, and how this tape allegedly would be owned by somebody who's in Hollywood or is not friendly to the president, do you think there's much chance that we would not have heard it if such a tape exists? What are the odds we wouldn't have heard that tape? I'm going to say zero. The only way that we would not hear that tape is if um, Mark Burnett, who is the producer of all those shows, was the only one who had it because he's friendly to the president. But if he was the only one who had it, <clears throat> nobody would have been playing it for Amorosa. So there are only two possibilities that seem likely. Of course, there are always more possibilities we can't think of. But the two likely possibilities are that if it did exist, we certainly would have heard it by now. And if Mark Burnett was the only one who had it, we wouldn't know it existed because he likes the president. Even if it did exist, he wouldn't show it to anybody, presumably. I mean, maybe he would, but we think unlikely. So it seems to me that the president has been put in a situation where he has to prove a negative. In other words, prove that something doesn't exist. Can you prove that something doesn't exist? You cannot. Can you prove that you didn't collude with Russia? even if you didn't. Nope, because you can't prove a negative. You can't prove that there wasn't some meeting you don't know about. Can you prove that he didn't, you know, do a million different things? No, you can't. 
So this is the most insidious attack on a president that I've ever seen, because there is no way he can prove something didn't happen, no matter how many people refute Amorosa's version of facts, and they have refuted it. So she's been well refuted, which is different from proving a negative, which nobody can do. It's logically impossible. So here's, here's my take on it. As far as I know, it's not illegal to make up some crap and put it in a book. If it were, a lot of people would be in jail. So what Amorosa is doing, which apparently, you know, just on the surface, it looks like she made up a terrible claim and put it in a book and is selling it. Now, this is the sort of claim, given the sensitivity of the world and Charlottesville is still in our still in our minds and all that. This is the type of story that assuming it's not true, and the evidence would suggest that, although it can never be proven as a negative, it's one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. Think about what this does to not just the country, but the entire world. It's the weirdest kind of non-crime because I'm pretty sure it's um, legal. Yeah, it's somebody saying that she could be sued for libel. But, you know, you don't see that happening, right? It's probably not going to happen. And I would say that the, the severity of this crime, if it's a crime, and the evidence would suggest it, that, uh, well, not if it's a crime, the severity of this abuse assuming that she did not actually hear a tape with that alleged word on it, the severity of this is unspeakable because it's the sort of thing people are going to believe. And it is so damaging to the country and because of the size of the United States and our role in the world, to the entire world. I'm trying to think if I've ever heard of anybody who did something that wasn't violent, that was worse than this. Can you think of anything? <clears throat> you know, if you're thinking of bad things, you immediately you know, think of Hitler and dictators, but they actually killed people. She could act, Her actions could actually um, result in war and death. I mean, it's that bad. Because if you, if you degrade the presidency enough, you're going to get murder attempts, you're going to get the government falling apart, you're going to get some bad stuff. Can anybody think of something that didn't involve actually violence immediately that's worse than what Amorosa probably did here? Can anybody think of anything? Stormy Daniels is a mild version of this. Stormy Daniels was just icky. Birtherism. Birtherism would not have caused any kind of a revolution. That would have been a technical problem at worst. So at worst, there would have been a paperwork problem with birtherism. Think of anything else. Somebody say blaming the victim. Well, even blaming the victim... um, Even blaming the victim would be only about the victim. This is something that could that could really kill a lot of people. Lying about rape. Yeah, even lying about rape and that sort of thing, those are lies about individuals who are not necessarily running the world. Weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, there was a that's a good one. So whoever was the um, I think there was a mole or informant who lied about weapons of mass destruction and then our government believed them and and in turn fooled the the public. But the person who lied about weapons of mass destruction actually caused a disastrous war. That might have been worse. But keep in mind that the person who did that wanted that war. So they got what they were trying to get, which was to get rid of Osama bin Laden. So even that's a little sketchier. How about the Steele dossier? 
Well, the Steele dossier... Um, yeah, I guess Brennan. Yeah, you're right. I guess Brennan and Clapper would be up there with Omarosa. Um, Comey, less so. I don't know what he's lied about exactly. Maybe something. Can't think of anything. Um, but have you ever heard of a worse crime that didn't have the death penalty? Now, I'm not saying that Amarosa should be put to death um, and nobody should go out and try to hurt her. But generally when somebody does something at this level of badness that could actually, you know, could potentially could destroy the, destroy the planet. Like it could actually destroy the planet. You know, you could, you could easily imagine how it would weaken the presidency until some international entity gets adventurous because we're weak. I mean, it could be pretty bad. Not likely, but pretty bad. Um, so I would say that Amorosa is one of the worst human beings in the history of human beings. One of the worst human beings in the history of all human beings. I'd put her on par with, you know, at least potentially the worst, you know, killers and dictators of the world. In terms of um, recklessness, yeah, Hitler, it's a special, it's a different category if you actually have actively killed people. So it's tough to be in that category. Avenatti, Avenatti's a lawyer. I don't know. He gets paid to be that way. I suppose Amorosa is being paid too. Benedict Arnold, yeah, he he's he was pretty vile, but he also didn't get away with it. Let's hope that Amorosa doesn't. Pol Pot, yeah, Pierce Morgan loves her. Probably not anymore. Uh, worse than Avenatti, yeah, definitely worse than Avenatti. Far worse than Avenatti. Because the president's personal life was sort of um, built into the our thinking already, so Avenatti didn't really change much there. But what Amorosa is doing is monstrous. Calling her a dog is an insult to dogs. I like dogs. But I have such a low opinion of her right now that I've, I can't think of anybody I've ever had a lower opinion of, you know, who is alive. Please stop now. Stop what? Did Trump misread her? You know, you don't really expect anybody to be this bad. This is a level of badness that I think would have been hard to contemplate. You know, it wouldn't be a surprise if she didn't do a good job or, you know, she said some critical things about him, you know, just in general. Those those would be bad things, but nobody sees something this bad coming. I just don't think you see that. Oh, pedophiles, thank you. Yes, yeah, somebody mentioned pedophiles as people who are worse than Amorosa, but um, only if they're serial pedophiles. You know that you'd probably have to be doing a lot of pedophilia before you'd be as bad as Amorosa, because remember, her potential impact could destroy the planet. Pedophilia destroys the lives of the people involved and family members and stuff like that, which is a, a tragedy. You know that's unspeakable. But it's still not destroying the planet. There's still another level there you can go. So she's as bad as a human being can be. It's too bad. One of the questions on CNN was, uh, or at least the headlines, Trump has no black senior White House staff. Well, whose fault is that? Do you think that's because he doesn't want any? <laughs> How many qualified black um, folks want to be on the Trump team after the press has painted him as the worst human being in the world. How could they expect that people are lining up for that job after what, what they've done to him reputationally? Uh, 
<laughs> All right. So there literally isn't any other um, news today. Yeah, Ben Carson is not White House staff. Ben Carson is head of HUD, which is technically not White House staff. That would be cabinet member. Uh, Katrina's, I think she's working on re-election campaign. Um, similar to when, yeah. Anyway, so there's literally no other, there's no other news. It was Kanye, it's uh, Amorosa, it's her book that's not selling. Uh, would you take that job? I definitely would not take a government job. That feels like a lot of work. Anyway, so let's hope that, uh, um, yeah, so Lynn Patton worked closely with Amorosa and has confirmed that everything she says does not check out. Somebody says, is Sasha Baron Cohen a hypnotist? Not that I know of. Um, I've seen no evidence of that. Proud Boys banned from Twitter. Yeah, I don't know the whole situation over there, so I don't really have any comments about that. That's one of those situations where you sort of have to know all the things they've said in order to have a good opinion, and I don't know all the things that Proud Boys have said or done, so I don't know how I would have an opinion of whether it was over the line or not. How would I know? Tesla going private is not news. I don't think that deal is on, is it? I don't see it in the headlines. That was just something they were talking about. Um, oh, let's talk about John McCain being left out of the announce. Uh, so I guess the president signed a bill or did something with John McCain's name on it, and he didn't mention John McCain. Isn't John McCain his political enemy who has caused all kinds of problems for the president? Do you really need to be nice to people who are not who are not your allies? I, I understand why people are talking about it, but I've never seen so many Democrats loving John McCain until it was a way to get at the president. I personally think that not complimenting your political enemies is not the worst thing anybody ever did. Yeah, I'll do a home tour. Not today. Um, I'm hoping that the Blight Authority website is back up. I'll check on that. I'm going into the city today to, um, to uh, let's see, what would it be called? I'm the interviewer on stage for Greg Gutfeld, who's talking about his book, The Gutfeld Monologues, which is a great book. You should read it. And so we'll uh, be at the Commonwealth Club. Tickets are all sold out. You can't get in. And I'll be asking him any questions that I have and the audience has. It's going to be fun. All right. Um, the Strzok, you know, the, the Peter Strzok story just doesn't interest me. The fact that he got fired is FBI business. I don't care. Um, he'll be saying bad things about the president. Predictable. Um, somebody said, will I periscope my conversation with Greg? Uh, not the event itself, just because I wouldn't be able to set up the microphones and stuff. It's already going to be on radio and um, video, and there'll, there'll probably be some way to get that out to you if you want to see it. Um, how about the Muslim school shooter training camp? Yeah. You know, news that could be news but doesn't develop into news. You know, people train to do bad things. It just doesn't make as much news as the actual bad things themselves. So it's not... Uh... <laughs> um, all right. I think that's it for me. And right now I'm going to sign off and get ready for my day. 
And Bruce Orr, yeah, we've talked about him already. And I will talk to you later. Bye for now.